Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you optional chaining. So if you haven't come across this yet, don't worry, it's fairly new. It's just been released pretty much. Um, you may have used it in the past with Babel. I believe it's now at stage four, so we are there. Um, and this has been more than welcome to the JavaScript community. I have been looking forward to this for absolutely forever. It has bitten me in the backside too many times. So I'm going to teach you this and how you can use it and hopefully you can go ahead and start using it in your applications. So basically here I've got a Create React app. On the left side I have it basically running and I've got the terminal because I want to log some stuff out. And I've just basically here created a person. So this person is an object, it has a name of Dwight Shrew, has a wife. And we have an object within an object. So this is where optional chaining comes in perfectly. So what is optional chaining? Well, in the past, you may have tried accessing objects with the notation such as person, dot name, dot wife. And that's great. That does work. Or not. <laughs> uh, person, dot name. Okay, that doesn't work. That's great though. Um, let's take rid of that and we'll get Dwight Schrute. Okay, perfect, that's good. So, what happens if we that say, particular property doesn't exist? Let's keep going forward for this. There we are, we'll get can't read property of blah, 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 blah of undefined. Well, why did that happen? Well, what you saw here is we have a person, we have a name, and we do not have a wife. So why did it not fail here? Well, a simple answer, to that is it has assigned it to undefined. Now, if I put or try go deeper in the tree of the object, it's gonna blow up and it's gonna blow up simply because it says here, cannot read property of undefined. Wife is undefined, so it's trying to read a property that is undefined. So you can get around this now. And granted, sometimes like if you're doing a render and the data's not there yet, the first initial loop that goes through the rendering tree is gonna blow up. So to protect yourself, you can basically use this notation. So the notation is, I'll put that over here, is question mark dot. And there it works. So what sort of magic happened there? Well, with optional chaining, instead of it basically blowing up, throwing an error like we've just seen, it will return undefined. And you can use this for properties, expressions, arrays, functions. And we're going to be looking at those. So to make this a bit more complex, I've got um, a data file here. It's an array of two objects. So we have Dwight and Michael Scott, and we have shows, which is an array with an object. And then we go even deeper within the object tree and we have quotes. So yeah, don't be an idiot. I should um, remember that a lot more. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's get going. So we know we can use this for properties, expressions, arrays, functions, and it comes in handy. It's really, really good. So if you want to access an array value, actually, you know what? Firstly, let's pull in, um, let's pull in this so input actors from, what did we call it? Was it data.json? I'm guessing it is or not. No, it's, oh no, it is. What am I doing here? Okay, so we've got the actors, and what we want to do now, we've got the basic a uh, basic structure here. So this is just an object, and we can we can look at the old notation. So I set old notation, and you can do person dot wife, and if that exists and it's not undefined, then go get the person dot wife's name. We can log that out, and we can say actually, you know what? Let's do old notation. Let's see it here. Hopefully you can see that better now. So there we are, we've got the old notation. We're basically doing a check that this exists and it's not undefined. And then go get some name. So that works, but it's a bit long-winded and I personally don't like doing it. I've never liked doing it. Um, I've always felt it was a huge feature that was lacking in JavaScript being able to do that. So what happens if we wanted to do, let's say, um, for this one, let's do person dot person dot friends, and let's just see what comes back. So person dot friends should be undefined. There we are. Yep. Now, what happens if I want to go deeper? We know there's no friends there, so it's going to be undefined. But we can't access the property of undefined, so this is going to blow up. 
There we go. So I cannot read property test of undefined. So you can always go to the first level because you'll get undefined back if it doesn't exist. But when you try going deeper in, it's, it's gonna blow up. So let's get rid of that. And let's do, um, you can also use this actually on, so like for example here, if you wanted to test the length, it's gonna blow up, but you can use optional chaining to just see if there's an array value there. So what's well, not checking for an array value. So basically what optional chaining is checking for, it it's checking for null and undefined. That's what it's checking for. So on the left side of the operator, if we get null or undefined, it's not gonna go ahead and short circuit, which essentially means it will blow up and it's gonna crash your application. We're just gonna return undefined. So now, for example, if I just do test, then we'll log out test. There we are, we have undefined. Okay, so that's the basics of optional chaining. Now, what happens if you wanna call a function? And we, we're guessing there's a function there. And we essentially, let's say we believe there's a function, but we're not too sure. So let's just cover our backs. So a function that does not exist, or maybe. Well, what you can do, you can use this notation again, the optional chaining notation, and then you can invoke that function if it exists. And it doesn't exist, so you get undefined, perfect. So, and you can just test this as well, like just put, um, just put function exists. No, it doesn't, it's undefined. Okay, that's good. So also you can stack these as well. So if you wanted to do like, um, let's just put, let's log these actually. Optional chain in with function calls. Um, this one, I wanna stack my OP operator. Um, and then we have the old notation, old notation, um, length check. So we can use a length check as mentioned, you just use that on length. Uh, okay, so let's stack this now. So let's say we have person and then we'll do, let's do hello. Okay, now within hello, maybe we're expecting another function. So let's get that function again. So you, here, I'm just making sure that we have a value on the left side that is not undefined. And then we can go ahead and use the optional chaining operator again. So let's see here, stacked. Um, test, that's fine. Stacked is undefined, so it served us. And now if I take these out, you'll see this here is undefined. No, sorry, person is not undefined. Hello is definitely undefined. So if I take away now, we'll get an error. There we are. So we protect ourselves here. And then if that hello exists, we can go ahead and try invoke that function. So if you haven't come across, I think that pretty much covers it at this point. Um, we can, we can, we'll get a bit deeper actually. I wanna quickly show you, and I'm gonna cover this in a separate video, but nullish, if you haven't heard this, <laughs> nullish coalescing, I believe it's called. So nullish, can I even spell this? Coalescing operator? So it kind of goes hand in hand. So we've seen we've seen on the left side, well, if it's undefined slash null, um, we can use this and then we can just get undefined back, return back. Cool. So now let's, let's actually do, okay, so up here we don't have a location and let's test for that location. First, let's see it fail. So we'll say person say, person say, uh, no, actually let's do person location, person location. And then let's log out person location. Cool. So this here is undefined, as you can see, undefined. If I go one level deeper, it's going to blow up. So let's put deeper. There you are. Okay, so you can protect yourself. As I said, the optional chaining operator is there to serve you. But what happens if we want to set some sort of default location? So what we can do here is we can use the knowledge coalescing operator, which is two question marks. And the two question marks basically, so we'll, let's put in here Scranton, um, probably going to struggle spelling Pennsylvania. Maybe that is it. Okay, maybe I don't know, someone can tell me. Uh, so, oh, 
I can't spell Scranton. Um, okay, so what we got here is we get the location back because it's seen here. These, this operator here, the double double question mark is saying if this on the left side, so on the left side of the operator is undefined or null, do everything to the right side. Hopefully that makes sense. It's, it's fairly confusing, um, but let me just walk through it slowly. So if this is undefined or null, like it says here, go ahead and return this side. So that's basically all it's saying. And it's really nice because I know sometimes you can you can also do checks like if one or two. Um, this is just completely different. Um, so if you're looking at optional chaining and nullish coalescing operators, definitely just you know stare at this for a second. And all it's saying is if this is undefined on null, go ahead and return this. So it's a nice backup default. And I quite like that. They go hand in hand, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and just mess around with the data for a bit, shall we? So up here, I'm gonna pull in a fragment. And you may be asking why, why don't you just use a shorthand notation? Well, fragment, you can actually apply keys to it, which is nice. So let's get rid of this. And we'll just say fragment. And we're not gonna be using the fragment just yet, but let's go ahead and do a map. And this is where we're going to look at optional chaining. It can get quite messy in terms of the syntax, but it's really, really good. So we'll set actors, and we know actors has two in there, Dwight and Michael. And we're going to say, okay, I want to make sure that we have an index of zero. If that's in there, perfect, keep going. And then I want to make sure I have the shows. And then I want to make sure I have the index of zero within the shows. And then I want to make sure I have the name. Okay, that sounds... Pretty crazy, right? Okay, let's remove that. Maybe that's a little easier. So you can see the actors, we're going to the actors. We make sure it's an array. We go for the index of zero. The index of zero will be white. And then we get the shows, which is here. So we have another array. Okay, let's come down here. And then what we can do, we can, you know what, let's use the fragment. We'll just pull it in and we'll say fragment key and we'll just say actor.id because we have one, I believe. Yeah, so we have an ID. You need to put the key in there if you're doing a loop in React. And then let's say fragment, pull that there. We're gonna need a nice little tag. Okay, and then we've got a key. Let's, let's get the actor's name. So actor.name. Actor.name, if we can type, Let's see what happens. Oh, fragment. Oh, of course. Okay, we have a parsing error. What's going on here? Um, don't need this. Actually, right now, uh, actors. What's this saying? Unexpected token. Let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's pull this up here. There we go. Uh, oh, item. Let's change this to actor. Shows dot map is not recognized. Okay, let's go get rid of the shows. Um, you can see it can get fairly tedious. There we are. I got the name. So also you can use it on the map here too. So if there's no actors, or for example, if you was deep in an object structure and you have objects and arrays inside and you keep going deeper and deeper, you can just use the optional chaining to make sure it's there before we start doing a map. Or what you could do if you're using GraphQL or maybe a REST API, default that value, the actors value to an empty array. And then it will, it will try, well, it will map over, but then you won't get failures in your code. So we have the actors, it, we've simplified it a bit here. Um, what we can do now, let's go over the shows. So we'll say actor.shows, and then we'll do a map again. And then we'll just say show, and then we'll say show, oops, show.quotes. There we are. And we could just do, put this in a P tag, um, make this a little nicer. I wouldn't recommend doing uh, inline styles like this, but you know, it's a tutorial. Uh, let's see what happens. Cool. 
And then we can just say style. Oh, you can't do that in React. I'm in the wrong language. Margin left, and we'll add 20 pixels. Nice. Cool. Let me zoom in on this bit here. And each child must have a unique key. Perfect. Okay, so where haven't we got a child? Oh, oh, here. Okay, so what you can do here, the fragment rail helps us out. We'll pull the fragment down. Um, you can stay there. Let's put this here. We'll have a key. And we'll just say uh, actors. Actually, this is getting hard to read. I can't even see this myself. Um, yeah, so have a fragment. Let's open that fragment there. Let's put that back a second so I can see. Okay, we'll pull that down. The shows can go in here. And then we'll say key equals show dot quote. Let's see. Yeah, let's do show dot. Oh, that's, that's actually, let's see what we can use in here. So we've got the ID, you know, let's just uh, do a dirty trick. I don't really like doing this too much when I haven't got a key. It can be a real pain, but you can just give it a key like actor.id. And there we are, we've got rid of the, I believe we got rid of the key error, or maybe not. We didn't get rid of the key error? What are we looking? Five? No, that's fine. We have a style in here, key actor.name.fragment.shows. Oh, let me just get rid of this a second. What? Where's this? Okay, we'll see, we'll see. So this is a tip if you're struggling to get the key sometimes. Uh, let's see, components. Let's see what the key is giving me on the key. Um, okay, I need to zoom out. I cannot see anything. What? Oh, I hate when it does that in React. Like, why can it not just show me the components? Um, yeah, that's annoying. Uh, new prop. So let me just get rid of this a second. Hell. Yeah, that's right. It is hell. Um, see, I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one here. Yes, I thought so. Okay, we'll put that back. We have actors. Oh, spelling mistakes. Oh God. <laughs> okay, so that's the final code. And this is the checks. I will, I don't know if you want me to put this in a paste bin so you can just like copy it and just read the comments and see how optional chaining works, nullish coalescing, Two very, very nice operators. And like here, if we expect shows not to be there whilst the first render happens in React, so go ahead and add the operator. So yeah, it works really, really nice. Um, I do definitely recommend using it. If you know, you're know you supporting very old browsers, go ahead and get Babel. That'll help you transpile um, and make sure you it's not going to blow up in an old browser. But apart from that, yeah, th thanks for watching this. Hopefully you learned something. And I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.